want this Monday to surprise and delight you in a way that Monday has never surprised and delighted you before. So you came from source energy. Here you are in this body, but only part of you is here. A larger part of you is still non-physical. We know you've heard that so many times. Your inner being is in real time focused upon whatever you're focused upon and having an opinion about it, a perspective about it, and law of attraction is responding to that perspective. So when life shows you some contrast, that rocket of desire that we've been talking about all of these years that you launch is what your inner being takes from that interchange. Your inner being is having the experience with you and taking from it what your inner being knows that you do want. So this is our way. We're going to keep going back and forth and back and forth until you are really up to speed with what we mean. So your inner being is already living the fullness of what Monday will be for you, even though it might be several days for you before Monday. Your inner being already knows the potential of Monday for you and holds that. Now, here you are a day or two or three or four before that, focusing on whatever you're focused upon. And if you're finding things to complain about today, then you're not preparing yourself for the rendezvous that your inner being is already prepared for to rendezvous with you on Monday. We can find a better way of saying this to you. It's important to know that everything that's going to happen to you has already vibrationally happened. That right now what is happening is really old news in terms of the leading edge because the leading edge is way past Monday. But there's a Monday waiting for you that you have the ability and the potential of meeting up with in your fullness, in which case Monday's going to be awesome. Or you can let today and the troubles of today fill your head with so much awareness and cause you to offer so much vibration that just like in the train analogy, you've got vibrations going in opposing directions. And so when you come into Monday, you're not ready for the Monday that your inner being is ready for and Monday is going to suck for you. <laughs> And the only reason that anything ever doesn't feel good to you is because you're off kilter, you're out of vibrational sequence, you're not in alignment with your counterpart, your non-physical counterpart who is always having an awesome day. Always having an awesome day. So how do I get ready for Monday? Really enjoy Saturday and really enjoy Sunday. In other words, find as many positive aspects as you can. Look for as many reasons Check your mood, tend to your attitude, look for reasons to feel good, reasons to feel good, reasons to feel good, reasons to feel good, reasons to feel good. And in doing so, you get that momentum going, momentum, momentum, momentum. Only the engine's going that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. And so then in any point in time, it doesn't matter if it's Monday or Tuesday or it doesn't matter when it is, when you meet your inner being where your inner being is, it's always delicious. It's clarity, it's passion. It's love, it's wholeness. But if you're not up to speed, then it's less than that to the degree that you're not up to speed. What's my protocol? How do I get ready for Monday? By finding as many things to feel good about right now, even if it means taking a nap. If you've got something harsh going on in your life experience and you wanna have a good Monday, we hope you'll sleep the weekend because you have a better chance of having a good Monday if you weren't offering contradictory thoughts all weekend long, you see. But even better. And that's just not offering contradictory thought if you're sleeping or if you're meditating. But even better, if you're awake and focused and praising and appreciating and making lists of positive aspects and doing the protocol of getting yourself up to speed with who your inner being is, then in time you find yourself just living in this constant state of being where you're just up to speed, 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 tuned in, tapped in, turned on, feeling good, getting all kinds of advantages from the knowledge of that broader perspective. So, you create your own reality, you know that? Do you? 
So how is it that thoughts turn to things anyway? How does that happen? If you create your own reality, then how is it that you're doing it? Can you accept that it's a perceptual thing? Can you accept that it's an energy thing? But how do you turn that into something that's tangible? How do you turn your thoughts into things? How do you get what you're doing? How do you understand the theories that we are presenting here? How do you practice these theories of these universal laws and turn them into real things for yourself? Well, you do it to some degree by trial and error. You have an experience and if you're able to isolate or identify what the components were of that experience, what the initial thoughts about it were, how it felt as it was moving along, and then ultimately what the manifestation was, which is just the beginning of more. If you can identify those components, how you were feeling as it was moving along, and then how you felt as it manifested, in that understanding, you're going to become an expert at the science of deliberate creation, at being the deliberate creator that you were born to be. We're talking about enjoying Monday, about letting now be full of everything that you're anticipating in Monday. We're talking about not needing to wait till Monday to feel good. We're talking about not needing to wait till the lions show up to be happy. So we start with the premise that you are a counterpart to a non-physical energy. Do you accept that? And do you accept that your inner being is, the epitome is not quite the right word. The extension is not quite the right word. Your inner being is the culmination of all that you have considered to be good or wanted. And you have a relationship. There's a relativity between you and that inner being. Do you sort of get that? So in simple terms, we say to you, your inner being knows who you are and where you are and where you want to be. So your inner being knows in every moment where you are in relationship to everything that you want. Now, the reason that we started with that basis is because the same answer is not the right answer for every person and it's not even the right answer for you every time you ask the question because it depends on where you are in relationship to who you really are so let's say that you've been thinking about something that you want particularly a lot and you've put an engine down over here and then you've noticed that it hasn't come yet so you put one over here and which makes you want it more so you put another engine there which makes you notice that you don't have it yet which makes you put an engine there so you've got lots of engines stacked up in opposing directions and so you're not really going anywhere and there's a strong dominant resistance going on within you and your inner being is still calling you if your inner being wouldn't call you toward what you want you wouldn't feel the tension of pulling yourself in opposition but your inner being is not ever going to stop calling you toward what your inner being knows you want because your inner being has already become it and so your inner being stands there in the pureness of that becoming and law of attraction is responding to you having already become it and so the rest of you has to catch up if you're going to feel good does that make sense to you the rest of you has to catch up. Esther has said to us, Abraham, just let go of it for a minute because I'm tired. Just let go of it because I'm negative and I'm tired and your happiness about it is hard on me. It really is sort of that way. So now you understand the scenario that we are presenting here. So then you decide that you're going to do something about it. You decide with all this resistance going that you're going to start making a list of positive aspects about it. But you're in this negative state of being. So everything you do, even though you don't mean it to be that way, works in contradiction to what you want. Because when you feel off about something, trying to fix it through thought, words, and action always just makes it worse. In other words, that's the time for a nap. That is a time for a massage. That is the time to do something that distracts you from it. Because as long as you're active in this, haven't you seen that about yourself? As you get into a debate with someone about anything or the debate with yourself about anything, this point, this point, an engine this way, an engine this way, an engine this way, an engine this way. And it just gets bigger and louder and bigger and louder and bigger and louder and it never goes anywhere. Bigger and louder and bigger and louder and bigger and louder. And so the time to 
do the processes. The time to make more lists of what you want are the time when you're already moving in the direction of it. In other words, the more you feel like adding clarification and specifics to it, the better. So every subject is two subjects. It's like a stick with wanted on one end and the absence of what is wanted on the other end. And you can tell by the way you feel which end of the stick you are most resonant with in any moment in time. You can tell. If you're ornery, don't work hard on processes. If you're feeling ornery, really do something to distract yourself from that onriness. You got to get out into a kind of clear space and things will clear up very fast. In time, in the absence of attention to those beliefs that are hindering you, those engines on that contradictory end of your train will just cease to exist. They will just evaporate. You don't have to get a crew together and pick them up and throw them into the ravine. They just will cease to exist if you cease giving attention and energy, if you cease keeping them in their formation by your attention to them, they will go away. Yeah. And that's a good Monday. That's a really good Monday. Because life is not about life making me want something and I don't have it and I don't have it and I develop patience and I don't have it 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 and then I have it. No, it doesn't work that way. It never works that way. You gotta get used to having it. You've gotta become a believer in things unfolding. You've gotta get in the vibrational place of receiving. You gotta understand that your inner being is transmitting to you continual blocks of thought and that when you're in that open receptive mode, then, then you are living happily ever after. And that's why we want Monday to be so good for you. We want it to be so much more than it was going to be if you just blundered into another Monday. So when you go to sleep at night, your momentum stops, all momentum stops. And when you wake up in the morning, that's your best opportunity to choose the thought that feels the best. We've written several books and there is one book, it's called Ask and It Is Given. And in the back of it, there are 22 processes. And every process in the book is written with the intention of helping you to release resistance. And in that book, with each process, there is a description of what emotional state you might be in that this particular process will help you to improve. Because some of your emotional states are light enough that this process will do the trick. Some of your emotional states are so dense and heavy with resistance that there's not much you're going to be able to do other than meditate which means quiet your mind, that's going to cause any vibrational shift. But in all of this, we are making too much of all of this in our attempt to make you understand the vibrational nature of your universe and of your being. We can offer so many words that it complicates the whole thing. When really, if you understand that the better you feel, the more momentum is moving toward what you are wanting, that that's the time to talk about it and to add more specificity to it, then it gets better and better. But if you're in a funk, the less you think about it, the better. Because when you're in a funk, law of attraction is not going to give up to you any thoughts that are different than the way you feel. So if you keep thinking about it while you're in a funk, you're only going to add momentum to what you do not want and cause more resistance. So surprising that with all of these words that we've offered, and we are so pleased at your collective comprehension of these words, that was a remarkable thing to feel how up to speed you were with this conversation that we just had. Now we would like to sort of wave a wand and remove that entire conversation from the atmosphere and say to you, find something that makes you feel good and spend all your time doing that.